All right, so one of the important things that we have to do is colorists is be able to set up that session and mm -hmm. we're getting that information we're getting that edit decision list we're getting the media from someplace a lot of times that's final cut pro right so let's uh show everybody how to take a final cut pro xml list send it around and send it around do do to a round trip okay we're taking the project that's on this here we're taking the burden for a da vinci sequence and you see that i have three different video tracks right we're in final cut pro yep I've got a fade up here out of this and a fade out. Nothing really fancy to light anything up. I'm just going to take the sequence. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to export an XML file. And I'm going to name this Burden for DaVinci and I'm going to put it on my desktop. Perfect. Okay, easy to find. So I'm going to hit save. And now basically I'm going to just hide Final Cut Pro for right now. Mm -hmm. And here's my XML file. So now we're going to go into DaVinci. And that's, you just shift tabbed a couple shift of Shift tabbed over to, to a get into there. Basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another project. So I'm going to start out into this area here, the project list, hit the config, config. tag to get there, create a new project. And uh, yeah, I'm going to save the last one we had there. And what I'm going to call this one is, I'm going to call it Burden for Da Vinci. Did I spell it close? Close enough. I'm going to say Create and it automatically creates a master session. But now we need to load that XML file in and find it, right? So I'm going to go to the Conform tab right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Load, and I'm going to go look for my XML file, which right. is on my desktop, yep. right? And Burden for DaVinci, right there. And I'm just going to open it. And now I have all the parameters that DaVinci is going to ask me questions for. I'm going to use the sizing information if it's there, Bring it in at 24 frames a second. Everything is set. I'm going to select OK. And it brought everything into the session. And as I as we scrub this through, this is our EDL cut right up on top right here. And Burden 4 at DaVinci. If I select the master session, that's going to show this timeline down here. And this is going to show us all our clips in order of time code. And you could render the entire order of clips out like that if you wanted. You don't have to just render out, you know, if you want to render everything you could, but if you want to render the EDL right here, that's where that would be. So I would select this. Now, one thing uh, that is really cool about this, there is a mode that you could compare the original work print to the EDL, because as a colorist, that's the scariest thing. I love color correcting, but if it's not right, it's the wrong clip, it's the wrong clip, so it doesn't work. And so it definitely happens. I mean, I, as an editor, I've had sessions come back and you, you think that uh, a clip is you know, the, the system, whether it's an Avid or Final Cut Pro, it's created that system from maybe proxies and you've up, you've taken that from a proxy to a higher resolution mm -hmm. clip. And when it d happens, something weird goes on and a clip that you thought was the clip that it was supposed to be, you, you hit it and you're like, well, that's not the right clip. And, or maybe it's not the right time. It shifted by a couple of seconds. And the only way that you can really tell as a colorist whether that's valid or not, because you don't, you've never seen that. No, I've before. never seen it is the, Work right, print. right. So the editor creates a low res uh, work print, basically just a QuickTime file that's mm -hmm. of a lower quality because all we really need to be able to do is see the content of every single edit and you're able to use that to match up against your full res clips. Right. So let's go back and find this uh, particular work print. So I'm going to go back to the browse tab right here. This is our media pool and I'm going to come back over here to open the folder up and other media. This is Burden for COD, and it, this is the work pick movie right here. I'm going to select it, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to add as offline clip. And so, if you'll notice right here, it has a little bit of a, a wand there or, a, or a, sure. a magnifying glass. So, that's telling me that that's that clip. So, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back to the conform area, and for my Burden for a Da Vinci right here, I'm going to come to this column, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to select the work picture. Now, if I go to the offline area, you'll notice that on the left mm -hmm. of this, it's in black and white because that's my work picture, and on the right is in color. So if I play this, you'll notice that they play in sync, mm -hmm. and that is basically how I can tell if my work print is correct or not. You know, it's really a cool uh, thing to know that 
you know, yeah, I know I got the right clips. Yep, it gives so you this, some confidence that you're doing the right thing and you're not going to send this back, uh, do a lot of work, send it back to the editor, and the editor's going to say, ah, oh, six of these shots are the wrong Yeah, shot. you get the phone call, it's like, uh, six shots are missing. Well, I didn't take them, but let's find them. Yep. And so the first thing I do, do now, in every project I do is I do, do this. I bring the work print in and I verify the cut before I do any color correction. Yep, makes sense. Why do a lot of work for nothing? Right, and because you're only going to have to go back and change things. Let's just verify the cut is correct right. first. So once we color correct this, we need to get back into Final Cut Pro, correct? Right, um, but hey, don't you editors change the cuts a lot? <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be locked when you come to color correction. Right. But okay. And one nice thing about a DaVinci is when we're color correcting, all the color corrections are loaded in to the master clips. Mm -hmm. That makes reconform, you know, a breeze basically. So I'm gonna tab back the final cut here. And I also have a sequence here called Burden for DaVinci RC, which is reconform. So I change the cut slightly. Okay, and so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna See, I've moved things around. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to export this right now. Right click on Burden for DaVinci RC, and I'm going to again export the XML right there. And again, right to the desktop, same name. With the RC on With there. the RC on it. So I can hide this again now. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to come back into Resolve, and in the, again, the Conform tab, I'm going to load another EDL. And this is it right here. I'm going to select Open. And again, the same uh, parameters, and I'm going to say OK. And now, this particular cut, this is the new cut with the color corrections applied. If I had already done them, they would have been moved. And if you want the other cut, well, it's right there. And so, so the same color corrections would fall in. So what Bob's saying is that if, while you're doing a color correction, you know, the, the editor sends it off to you, you spend a couple of weeks or a couple of days color correcting, and while that's happening, the producer makes some changes, like, oh, we need to, you know, we send it off to the network and they don't like these couple of shots or they wanted to change some things. Now, you're working on a different sequence than the editor is, right. so this is a way to take the editor's new sequence, bring it back to your sequence, and not have to redo all that work. And it, it works great. Remember back when we had to work, when we worked on color, that was really one of the downfalls. Where mm -hmm. Re-conforming didn't work very well. Before it got axed, it was working pretty good, but this is a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. This works so easy. It's a great way to do it. Uh, I'm not afraid to start working on the project beforehand because I'll just start down in the master timeline, just grading things out. And then, mm -hmm. you know, send me the EDL when you're ready with it tomorrow or whatever. Perfect. And now we're going to get this back to Final Cut Pro? Yeah. When we do that render section later coming up, we'll render this timeline and send it back to Final Cut Pro. But how we physically do it is we go through and color correct, and then we go to the render room, basically, or the render tab, mm -hmm. or the render screen, whichever way you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And then we add, you know, we add the proper uh, pass where we're going to render to add all the clips and render, and then we export out an XML file. And we'll do that as we render, because we're going to render this whole project through in a little bit. Perfect. Well, the next thing we'll check out is uh, Avid's being able to do a round trip in Avid.